So I've got quite a bit of time as I drive back from the Ontario tournament. I thought I'd share last night's adventure with you guys. Uh, yeah, a little Lindy rough this morning. Uh, the head was uh, Marty McSorley, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I had all, the, all my gear packed up last night and figured I'd hit the lounge for a Kelly Bookburger and some Eric Brewers. Uh, I'm up there and I'm enjoying my Bob beers and I noticed this lady over at the Dave Bar giving me the Peter Budai. Well, she looks pretty good, so I wave her over thinking maybe I can Blake Wheeler, right? Uh, she gets a little closer and uh, yeah, she looked like a Neil Sheehy with a Doug Waite problem. Uh, I was convinced she was actually a James Van Riemsdyk. Um, but to tell you the truth, it's been so Roberto Luongo since I've had Dave Sexton that I'd bang a gorilla in a Jordan Tutu if I had to. Um, yeah, but anyways, we're chatting and I'm finding it really hard to keep looking into her Steve Eiserman because I'm staring at this big Brian Boyle right in the middle of her face. I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if I could bring myself to stoop this Patrick Marlowe anymore. Uh, she's like, oh, I really want to come back to your place. And I'm like, Johnny, oh, do you? I'm not so sure anymore. So, you know, I excuse myself, uh, go down to the little uh, Daryl Boyce room and, you know, think about things. I'm in there and I, I'm washing my hands and she bursts through the door, pulls out my Mike Babcock and starts giving me Victor Hedman right in the Eric Stahl. I mean, I was convinced this chick was a Joe Newendike, but yeah, whatever. Uh, so, you know, 23 glorious seconds later, uh, I hand her a towel so she can wipe the Alexei uh, semen off of her face, and uh, we're heading back to my place. So, you know, I pay the Rick Tabarachi, and out the door we go. Now, uh, there's Garth Snow everywhere. I mean, it's not exactly the middle of Brad May, so, you know, we walk out into a pretty good Theo Fleury. Uh, I'm thinking to myself, the only way we're getting back to the hotel by foot is if we got some uh, cross-country Sergei Bobrovskis, right? So we decide to take a Thomas Caberlet instead. So I get her back to the uh, back to the room, and she starts peeling gear, and I, I Rafi Torres her gear off, and uh, you know I expose a pretty decent set of uh, Germaine Titoffs, and uh, you know everything's good. Then uh, then I get her out of her uh, Lulu liars, and uh, I discover this chick is super Jason Woolley. I mean, this chick has never been to the Bill Barber, I'm telling you. Um, you know, and I keep my head shaved, so I've got my, do my Donald Brashears, and I could probably shave her down to the Jeff Skinner, but, you know, to tell you the truth, it was uh, a little tie ratty, uh, a real Marc Messier, and uh, it was a little Mike Rieke, so I really didn't want to go near the damn thing. Uh, so anyways, you know, she sees the disappointment in my face, and she uh, flips herself over onto her stomach, and she says, hey... Why don't you take my Dustin Brown Don Cherry? And I'm like, but it? Well, I didn't want to go in Leon Drysidle, right? So I grabbed some Hawk and Lube, and then I Pavel Berry it right into her Darren Poopa. Whew, 23 glorious seconds later, you know, I empty my Joe Sackick, and we collapse on the bed. Uh, she really wants me to, to uh, Ryan Spooner, but I'm not feeling so Chris Osgood about the situation. So, uh, you know, I tell her, hey, I got to get up. I got to get up Brandon right tomorrow and leave pretty Jordan Everly. So, uh, you know, there's the Daryl Sidor and uh, out she goes. So this morning I wake up and my Michael Pekka is Travis Green and it Brent Burns. I mean, Brent Burns. So I'm looking back on the evening and I can't believe how Matt Dumba I was. Um, so anyways, the moral of this story, uh, if you don't want to follow in my Manny legacy, you know, uh, the next time you get Randy Wood on the road, uh, you know, you're better off to use your handsome brother, all right? Or you're going to pay the carry price.